Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal. Let's talk about DSP Global Innovation Fund of Fund. The this is a new fund offer just uh, in its NFO period, and it's based on the so-called innovation theme. Well, uh, what that is is a little bit arbitrary, but it's the AMC claims that uh, companies with innovation theme have the potential for higher uh, revenue and earnings and earnings growth. Does that really pan out from its own uh, analysis? Let's find out. So the structure of the fund is similar to the HDFC developed world uh, indexes fund of fund. It's a combination of six funds. So the this is a fund of fund with six underlying fund, 15% of this and 15% of that and 20% of something else and so on. Uh, well, uh, if you ask uh, why 15%, why not 20%, why not 25%, well, that, that's what gave the, well, you have to choose the combination that gave the best result in the back test. But is the back test uh, conducted by the AMC the best? I don't think that's the case, sadly. Before we get to that, most of these funds, um, I'm just too tired to read out their names. You can have a look at that. Most of these funds uh, are... Uh, uh, US heavy the stocks are based in the uh, US market and uh, so there's really not much of geographic diversification it's got about 70% of large cap 20% of mid caps and so on obviously the the AMC has the flexibility to change the weights or the funds at will and so on whatever uh, suits their uh, situation if the performance is not uh, good enough now the the biggest catch is that you can't really backtest this uh, combination because the US Inside Fund, the Morgan Stanley US Inside Fund was launched only in September 2020. The Nico AM Arc uh, Disruptive Innovative Fund was launched only in June 2020. Now um, the, the AMC has a very elaborate uh, explanation for this. They have used some kind of, they have replaced this with some kind of equivalent fund and done the backtest. They have done the backtest from 29th January 2002 when only two of the six funds were present. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, I, I can't, uh, I mean, I, I can't accept that. But anyway, for even if you assume that their elaborate justification, we will replace this by that and do the backtest and so on. Even if that is the case, how good is that, that that strategy? So this is the value of a thousand rupees per month SIP since 29th January 2002. So the uh, the dark line here is uh, uh, SIP in the uh, MSCI All All Country World Index, uh, and uh, the uh, the light green line is the uh, is there that's the back test in the basket of the innovation oriented funds. If you look at this, I had asked this question in Asana Ideas of Wealth. If you see a graph like this, what would you uh, get attracted to? Would you get attracted to this region here or would you get attracted to this region here? Well, we need to get first attracted to this region here. This is from January 2002 until 2016. That is for 14 years. You are doing a 14 year SIP in a basket, uh, in an actively managed basket. And uh, I mean, that's the, I mean, uh, even if it's not actively managed in the backtest, that's the idea of the fund, right? And it will have its own expense on top of that. Three of those uh, funds are uh, uh, active funds, if I'm right. So they have an additional expense. The underlying funds, three of them are active. For 14 years, such a basket did not, um, you know, outperform a simple uh, index fund SIP. And uh, only in the last few years, and particularly in the pandemic, after the, um, you know, post the crash, when uh, you know you have the you had the huge surge in tech companies and so on. That's when uh, you had that huge growth. Is this really because of innovation, or is this because uh, necessity became the mother of uh, invention? Is, um, it's just a matter of, uh, uh, in the sense that certain stocks, or I should let me word it better. Things like Zoom moving up or Microsoft moving up or uh, Google moving up, th those, th they did not move up because of innovation. They moved up because of the pandemic, the user base became higher. Isn't that, is, isn't that how you would interpret it? This movement is not really because of innovation, if you ask me. And you can't say there's no innovation for 14 years and that's not right. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's silly to assume is to look at this graph and get distracted by this. Uh, what is really, really important is that you can't expect 
or assume that this kind of outperformance and that is only recent the recent outperformance will continue to happen in future particularly after you invest and actually if you look at the returns in the last year uh, in the last one year bgf world tech fund underperformed its benchmark by 19.35% that's the margin of underperformance and the morgan stanley us insight fund underperformed its benchmark by 32.36% that's how bad they have underperformed once the you know the 2020 crash the recovery was more or less complete after that one year has passed i mean we have been in the pandemic for a long time now uh, so you can see that it's it's really not uh, you know done uh, already the outperformance has decreased so you can't expect this kind of behavior to you know sustain all the time this is just a very uh, conveniently placed graph even that conveniently placed graph has got a flaw that 14 years of underperformance i mean really seriously uh, you really can't uh, there's really no evidence that it will do better uh, that it will do, uh, you know, uh, there's really no justification for it. And the and, uh, and the AMC seems to claim that SIP in innovation oriented funds can provide investors better investment experience as well as opportunity to earn relatively higher returns. Then it says innovation oriented funds have witnessed periodic high drawdowns. That means the risk is higher. Investors need to hold the fund for long term through SIP with an aim for better investment experience. There is absolutely no uh, justification for these statements. Uh, regular uh, members to the channel subscribers will know that we have talked about the SIP versus lump sum. Sometimes SIP will win, sometimes lump sum will win. We have talked about SIPs whether they reduce risk or get you more returns. That doesn't happen either. They neither reduce risk nor enhance returns. It's I don't want to get into that part again. Uh, you can look at uh, past videos for that. Uh, there's really no uh, uh, justification in saying that a SIP will be better if you uh, in this innovation fund. They, I mean, that's just that's just their way of telling you that the risk will be higher. Uh, so tread with caution. And uh, well, we can tread with caution uh, in an extremely nice way by completely avoiding this fund. There is absolutely nothing special about this. It has even in their own back test, it has underperformed for 14 years. Therefore, please stay away. If you want uh, tech funds or uh, which uh, anyway are, uh, you know, uh, have to be innovative to survive, then all you need to invest is in the NASDAQ 100. And you, of course, uh, once you appreciate the risks in that, if you want geographic diversification, then a simple S&P 500 index is better. Yes, yes, you have all these problems with uh, foreign uh, overseas investment limits and so on, but that will not last forever. The next couple of months that should get sorted out. I mean, it's not like oh, just because your fund has closed investment doesn't mean you, oh, you, you, your life has stopped or your returns are going to stop. Things will, uh, I mean, you're here for the long haul and SEBI should soon increase those limits. Stay away from this.